Hey there, Brad Miller today with Jason Medford, and today we're going to talk about dun, dun, not, not dun. specifically, but we're going to talk about animal medicine. Um, and I've, again, for those of you watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to follow along a little bit easier uh, today, but uh, we're going to talk about animal medicine. Um, this is something that I've been working with for well, probably since 2020, I'd imagine. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about three, four years now um, yep. that I've been working with, with animal medicine. And, and if you can see my book that I use, um, the, the binding is kind of coming off. So that's how much I actually use. I actually use these cards and things. Um, so, but yeah, I know we've, ref we've referenced animal medicine in the past. We've talked about some of the cards that have been drawn. Um, we've talked about some of the animals that we've seen and how that's kind of you know, been something that's given us some, maybe some guidance or, or you know, messages and things like that. So, but we never really talked and done a whole session just on what animal medicine is and, and things. So I figured that would be a good thing to talk about in this episode. Um, again, cause I know I draw a card pretty much every day and, mm -hmm. and take messages and get guidance from it. But, you know, how do you use animal medicine uh, in your spiritual path? Yeah, so it's it's interesting because it's, you know, and if we talk about um, kind of in general, right? So Brad has animal medicine cards. I have the same deck myself um, that, that when I use them, <clears throat> I use I use that deck. But kind of in a, in a, in a general sense, right, it's like, why would you... Uh, because animal medicine comes to us all the time in different ways. And a deck of cards is just one way, right, to get it. Because effectively, right, each, each animal is bringing us messages. Each animal is bringing us maybe confirmation. But often they're also bringing us healing medicine as well, right? So... Certain animals will show up in our lives to help us heal as well. And so even four-legged animals that are running around your house like cats and dogs, <laughs> those are bringing medicine to you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's so, you know, typically, you know, when people might use them, they're looking for an answer. They want maybe, you know, terms some people use is divination, of, of, of some kind of, they're searching for an answer, and so they might pull cards. And so cards are very common, whether that's tarot cards, whether it's, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different uh, types of cards out there. I have probably five or six different sets, um, but I don't use cards in my regular uh, practice, right? I have them... When I feel like I I need to use them, I use them as a tool, but it's not a tool that I use very much, right? Where Brad, you use them pretty much every day, right? And so, so how I tend to to do animal medicine more is when I come across uh, animals in nature or have premonitions of certain animals, I will look up what the meaning is, right? And so on the, you know, probably the last episode, if you listen to the last episode, we were just talking about one that I had gotten this morning, the day that we're recording, where I was thinking about something, a hawk flew by. I, I moved on to something else. I went back to thinking about that again later hawk flew by the other way right and so what i typically do is again i could pull out my book and it's probably a good idea for me to do that today at some point because i saw the hawk twice right um, and, it, and it's not a coincidence i don't see hawks every day right and so when a hawk shows up then i should pay attention because a hawk is bringing me some kind of medicine or it's trying to warn me or share with me something. In, in this instance, I think it was a confirmation about what I was thinking about. 
Um, but but there's probably more if I sit down and read the chapter on Hawk. Some of the words on the page are going to jump out to me. And they're going to jump out to me today differently than they did any other day. But I know Hawk means messenger, right? That's their, their main thing is Hawks represent messages. So, you know, with certain animals, I just kind of know kind of the word or two that, that goes along with them. Like deer is, you know, gentleness and, you know, things like that. You know, we talked about swan being grace, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, to me, obviously that hawk was bringing me some kind of a message. I think I know what it was, but I could now sit down and read that chapter and see what words jump out to me differently today. And that's going to be probably the message that I need to hear. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, and again, that, you know, the book and the card deck that we have, I think there's, well, there's like 50 or 60 animals in there. But obviously, it's not all animals. And so some of you might be going, well, how do I find out if 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 I if I don't have one of those books or I don't have a card deck and I see a cardinal? Well, the internet, folks. Google. And so he, Google. So here's what I do is I put I put a standard kind of search term in. I would put cardinal animal medicine. And there's three or four websites that I usually go to, but what I what I tend to do is I allow, I type in that search term, whatever the first hit is in Google that day, I click on it and I read through it and see what it is. Because there's a lot of different animals that are out there that might not be in a book like that. Um, but you can, you know, and again, just kind of trust that as you scan through or read through it, something will jump out at you. And when that something jumps out at you, that's the message you needed for the day, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, we'll kind of turn back to Brad because we know you you drew Swan this morning, yep. right? And so, again, I'm sure you know, maybe explain, you know, your process. But again, I'm guessing that as you read Swan today, it was different or a different message came out than maybe if you pulled it three weeks ago. Sure. Yeah. Because again, pretty much every day, you know, sometimes I don't on the weekends, you know, my schedule gets a little different or whatever, but most weekdays I sit down when the first things I do, um, you know, I sit down, I, I write and journal a little bit, do some gratitude work, and then I pull an animal card. Um, and I use the animal cards for me um, to, you know, give me um, maybe some things that I can work on for the day, maybe something to kind of remember, to kind of keep in the back of my head as I go through the day. Um, for instance, so for this morning, it was it was Swan back here, Swan card with Grace, um, which talks about, you know, allowing things. Um and I know we talked a little bit about, you know, the idea of self-love and stuff like that. And so what I'll, you know, you know, I'll, I'll read through in the mornings and then I will write down kind of what sh comes out to me, you know, every morning. So after I've read through it, I was like, all right, so these kind of things coming to me. So I'll write them down in my journal. But then I try to keep that in mind. And that's one reason why I've got this little stand here so that I can remember what I'm, what I'm supposed to be thinking about today. This is mm -hmm. a swan. And so that came through today when trying to come with a podcast topic. Um, you know, normally I like to have a t couple of topics that we can talk about. You know, I try to maybe get a little quiet. And even um, yesterday, I sat for 20 minutes here in silence, um, trying to see what if something would come to me. And I didn't get anything come through. Uh, I took the sh you know my shower this morning, kind of did the same thing, and nothing came through. And so, my taking of the swan and the grace is to allow whatever comes out to come out. Um, when it came to that podcast episode, being okay with not having a topic, you know, sometimes that's just a lot of pressure to try to come up with stuff. You know, I mean, if you ever try to write something or, you know, come up with ideas or, you know, try to be creative about something, there's a lot of pressure sometimes can come with ideas and coming up with, with topics and stuff. And so rather than get all up about the fact that nothing was coming, that I didn't have an idea, um, just to allow, just to be okay with it. Um, we talked, I think, a couple episodes ago uh, about surrendering. 
you know, all right, well, I didn't have any ideas top of mind. We'll just see what comes as we go and, and we start talking about it um, because there's something that needs to be said, but it'll come through us at some, in some way. Um, and so that's how I use my Swan card today. Um, you know, sometimes it does, it doesn't always hit right away. Like most of the times I read it and I don't necessarily say, Oh, I know exactly who that is. Um, but, um, going over to the holidays, I knew we were heading out of town. Um, and, um, so I, you know, the day before we left, I pulled a card, um, to remember, to kind of see, you know, Hey, what do I need to be doing? And um, the cards I pulled, and I don't even remember what the animal was now, but it was all about um, rest. And I'm like, well, that makes perfect sense because I'm going away for family for a couple of days uh, for the holidays. Um, and this is a reminder that I need to just be relaxing and enjoying and not getting all, um, you know, worked up about what things are going on and, you know, what am I doing for, for the law practice and all this other stuff just to, uh, you know, enjoy peacefulness and, and the relaxation and let my body, my mind and everything else kind of relax. Um, and so that was a card that I had uh, while I was gone and kind of sat with, with that one. Um, and so it doesn't, sometimes it comes right away and it pulled it. and was like, yep, that makes perfect sense for going on, for going out for, for a couple of days for vacation over the holidays. Sometimes it doesn't strike me right away. Like the swan card, um, it took a while. You know, I had to be in the shower and I'm like, all right, that's is what I'm trying to be that I need to learn today. And and other times uh I I, I don't necessarily consciously get the message. I you know, it's there, it's something that's percolating subconsciously, but maybe I don't necessarily see that connection right then and there. Um, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, it's not necessarily meant to be instantaneous. There's still things that I'm getting out of it, even though if I can't see it right in front of my face. So yeah, that's, yeah, and that's I think my daily card. I think it's interesting, you know, now, especially too, I mean, I, I live in an area where there is wildlife around. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we get certain things, but, you know, sitting out on my deck, I, I see different animals, different days. Right. So, but a lot of us, even even where I live, it's still a city kind of feel. But nature hasn't really left, right? The coyotes and 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 you know the lynxes and the, all the other kinds of stuff are still here, right? They're still wandering around. All the birds, everything else. But you know, most of us don't live out in nature or live in a place where we 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 are not going to probably have that sort of proximity to um, to animals. And so that's why things like animal medicine cards and pulling them uh, is just brings those animals into our awareness. It energetically brings them in. It allows the healing. But it's not just cards either, right? So, you know, I'm sitting in my office and, and I, have, uh, I have a statue of two hummingbirds right in front of me because hummingbirds are a very important bird to me uh, for a lot of different reasons. And so I always have hummingbirds around me. Now I have hummingbirds around me outside too sometimes. And even in the dead of winter, uh, you know, not every day when I was in California, they pretty much were, were on my birds of paradise almost every single day. We don't really have but, winter though in, in LA no, like that though. So. No, but but I still have hummingbirds here. I have hummingbird feeders. They'll come. Sometimes they'll even come and they'll sit and they won't even drink and they'll just look at me. Uh, because I have you. a yeah, no, <laughs> well, they're doing something else because I have a very special relationship with hummingbirds. Yeah. So I have a statue of two hummingbirds right in front of me in my office, right? I have a little, mm -hmm. you know, medallion here uh, that a friend of mine gave me that has a hummingbird on the top. And you know, those of you that are on uh, mm -hmm. on uh, YouTube could see that, but there's a hummingbird, there's a condor, there's a snake, and there's a puma on this particular piece. So just having this piece of brass with those animals emblazoned on them 
is still giving me the animal medicine from those. And I can remember and I can think about and each of these animals has a very significant uh, meaning and relationship to me as well. And so that's why I keep that here, right? You can't see because of the darkness, but right over there is a lion. So I have a Malachite uh, carved lion in my office. And there's another reason because I have a significant relationships with lions as well. Uh, partly due to the fact that I'm a Leo as well, astrologically, but even deeper than that, the connection that I have with lions, um, that is always with me here, right? And so there's other ways besides just the cards to incorporate, you know, Brad's got a picture, mm -hmm. you know, in the back there, I think is it's a raven or is it a, it's a raven, I believe. No, what is it? No, that is a, uh, that is a vulture. Oh, well, vulture. And I actually had that picture commissioned. Um, okay. By a local artist here. Um, so uh, we've got, since I moved down here away from the city there are places to go hiking there's nature areas right outside my door like i love looking at my window and i've got a woods right out here um but my favorite place to hike around here and the place that's most special to me several years ago um i feel it was like i think it was like april or something it was in the spring i was walking down the path and all of a sudden i saw you know there was like kind of a shadow kind of came over top um, and I looked up and it was a, you know, there was um, there's these turkey vultures that were flying over and one kind of crossed over between the, you know, the sun and it proceeded to come down and landed on a tree branch and stared at me for probably a good 30 seconds. And so ever since then, it's over this side, actually. Uh, the vulture has a special meaning for me. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people, they might think, oh, vulture, those are nasty, nasty birds. Well, everybody go look up, type in, you know, turkey vulture animal medicine in the Internet and see what pops up. And you'll be surprised. Those are very powerful very strong animals. In fact, you know, so Brad has had his experience with turkey vultures. Guess what? I have two. In fact, uh, you know, usually when I would travel and go on road trips, uh, birds escort me along the way. And I know it sounds crazy, but birds... Not, those who are listening to us, nothing's crazy <laughs> anymore. They've pretty much just... Birds escort me on my trips usually and they typically show up in the form of ravens crows and turkey vultures and so i remember there was one particular uh trip that i took when i was in california and uh the whole uh, you know i went from where i was living in long beach up to ojai which is in little uh mountains outside of la from ojai i drove down to the ocean uh kind of by santa barbara and then went back and back and that whole trip the turkey vultures there were always at least one turkey vulture that was circling around or flying beside the road where i was traveling so um mm -hmm. there's another way that animal medicine comes in right? yeah we we've, we've got a lot of of um a lot of crows around here Mm -hmm. So even now in the winter, there'll be groups of crows. Um, and oftentimes I'll see a group of three of them, in fact. Um, and I've actually had a couple of close calls with some, with some vultures who have been on the side of the road and come up in front of my car as I'm driving. And I've had to quickly sit at the, hit the brakes um, because obviously there was a message there that I needed to learn that <laughs> I needed to uh, <laughs> pay attention to. Um mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, again, maybe we talked kind of in some generalities, but some other things that have kind of come into me that we probably should share with people here is, and you already kind of mentioned it, if you see animals in threes, pay attention. 
because the number three is usually some kind of an omen or message that's really getting you to pay attention because it's not unusual to see one of something. Um, a lot of times things like doves, it's not unusual to see two doves together because they're love doves, right? I mean, they, they, they kind of tend to be together in pairs often, but if you see just three, or like one day I I looked at my neighbor's house and there were about 30 of them sitting on their roof looking at me. That's unusual. <laughs> okay, so they were bringing a message of peace and love to me and confirmation of some things, right? So just to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Even if you only see one, is the animal acting normal? Or is it acting different, right? Like I told you, it's not unusual for me to see bunnies in my neighborhood here because we have bunnies all over the place, right? And usually I see one at a time because that's kind of how it goes. But And for the most part, they're usually on the other side of the street and kind of run along the neighbor's property um, down alongside the road, right? And that's kind of normally how I see the bunny go back and forth. But I remember one day the bunny was running along and all of a sudden it like stopped and jumped up in the air and did like a somersault twirly ballet kind of move and then jumped back down and then ran on. Okay, so bunny or rabbit had some particular meaning or was bringing me something that day because of its unusual behavior. Mm -hmm. When the turkey vulture comes and sits down next to Brad in close proximity to a human and looks at him for 30 seconds. That's unusual behavior for a turkey vulture. <laughs> so it was bringing him something, <laughs> right? Um, and so I think that's, that's one way to think about. Now, if you're using cards, you know, if you're using animal medicine cards or even if you're using tarot cards or any other cards, because I, I used to be this way where it was like, oh, am I going to pick the right card? Am I going to pick the right card? You were don't thinking worry. it. Yeah. Don't worry. The right card is going to come. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you shuffle the deck. Uh, you're going to pull. If you have that intention, you're going to pull the right card. So, so let that go. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> and when you pull something that isn't the answer you wanted, Maybe that's the answer. It's, what, <laughs> right? you need. it's yeah. what you need. So don't have the expectation of, oh, I've got to pull the eagle card. Well, maybe eagle is not what you needed to hear today or needed to do today. Right. right. So, you know, don't worry about that. Does it does it matter how you shuffle the deck? I don't know. Everybody has personal preferences. You know, some people say nine times you cut the deck. And, pick the one on the top. I usually, it's whatever feels right for you. If you feel like today, just pick the one off the top, then pick the one off the top. If you feel like you should shuffle the card three times, then shuffle the card three times, right? If you want to cut it nine times, then cut it nine times. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the answer um, that you're supposed to get, however you end up pulling it. Yeah, the, the, what's important, and we talked about this before, is kind of the intention behind it. Mm -hmm. and, and the answer, whatever it is that needs to come up, will come up. Um, and I've had that problem, too, where I kind of want something like, oh, I'd love to have an eagle. Like, I'd love to have, you know, something like that. Or I'd love to have um, the raven or the owl, you know, some, you know, some animals like that. Um, and I don't get them very often. Like mm -hmm. I probably, some of those are some of the ones I get the least. In fact, um, you know, the ones I get a lot, um, are things like, um, the, the, um, not the jackal, but the, um, the coyote, mm -hmm. um, I'll, you know, stuff like that. Um, I'll get the dolphin mm -hmm. or I'll get spider, mm -hmm. you know, different things like that, that I'm like, if I had to just pick an animal, I would never pick, you know, a spider. Like spiders are kind of creepy, crawly, and all that kind of, you know, like, you know. Well, no, and, and it's uh. So I'll tell you too, because because along with this too is, 
you know, because you're listening to us here, right? You're already kind of on the path and realize that a lot of the stuff that we're taught is not true and you just need to throw a lot of it out. But one of those is our association with certain animals or mm -hmm. what we perceive belongs to certain animals. Like a lot of times people think, oh, snakes are disgusting, spiders are disgusting and nasty. No, they're both very powerful animals. And if you actually get into and understand the medicine or have some of the medicine from them, you'll see that they're, that they're very good. And <clears throat> example for me as well. So, you know, I already told you that I'm I'm a Leo because I'm I, that's when my birth happens during during the the zodiac signs but i'm also a rat in the chinese zodiac and so again a lot of people look at and go rat right and, and most of my life i've been oh man rats are disgusting uh you know sort of thing but no rats are not disgusting rats are one of the smartest most intelligent most resilient animals on this planet Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, well, and if you've if you've ever tried to trap or poison them, you know how smart these little fuckers are, too, right? And so I was, it was probably about a year ago now. I was in in San Francisco, and I was in Chinatown. I was looking. I I was specifically looking. I wanted to find a statue of Lao Tzu, and Lao Tzu is the one that wrote the Tao Te Ching. Um, so I was looking, I went to Chinatown, I was staying close in the area and I went to Chinatown trying to find a statue of Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Uh, and so I was in this, in this store where, uh, you know, there's lots of Confucius and other people around, but I, I, so I, I started chatting with the owner and she's like, oh no, I think I do. Come here, come here, come here. But she only had like this smaller one of three of them she only had one of the Lao Tzu so I started talking to her and I ended up buying them and I don't know how it came up but but it was uh no I think it must have been I don't even remember now how it came up but somehow it came up that I was a rat zodiac sign and she's like oh rat rat very powerful rat leader and i'm like what <laughs> and so she started to get in and explain a little bit more about <clears throat> how powerful actually the rat zodiac sign is in the chinese zodiac completely blew me away right so again it's like don't uh don't discount or let what the world has taught you about certain animals believe that because certain things like cockroaches those are powerful little buggers right and there's a lot of power in cockroach medicine now i know they scurry around and they startle people and they scare people but read up on cockroach medicine and you will find out how amazing it is and i went through a stage in my life where i had a lot of cockroaches and it wasn't because my house was dirty. It wasn't because my house wasn't sealed up or clean. It was because I needed cockroach medicine and they found me, uh, you know, to the point to where sometimes we might go away for a day or two and we come home and there's like 12 dead ones in my house. That's unusual, <laughs> right? Uh, or they just, instead of scurrying away like the, the vulture, they just stand up and kind of turn their head and look at me for a little while and then scurry off again, unusual for a cockroach. So, um, yeah. Now anyway, a, a vulture is the same. Yeah. No, vulture is the same way. I mean, people think of vultures as, you know, these ominous things are associated with death and, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But when you read up on vulture medicine, well, it's the same thing with ravens and crows, right? A lot of people, you know, because of, I don't know if Hollywood or whatever else it is, but they always think it's that Ed Ravens... It's fault. Is it, is it, there we go. There we go. Lenore! Lenore! It's all his ravens. fault. Yeah. But, um, but ravens and crows both, you know, a lot of people think that they always bring bad omens. Oh, no, they don't. 
they are very powerful uh, and they're not bringing, you know, dark messages uh, to you. Um, and so kind of throw, throw a lot of that stuff out. Um, and the other thing that that kind of popped in too that that I just felt we should probably address is you know and again whether you're using you know animal medicine cards other cards reading horoscopes anything like that all of the words are not for you right so there's there's certain words in the book or the chapter that are going to jump out to you. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing doesn't relate to you at that particular point in time, regardless of who wrote it. And so don't read more into it than just what you're supposed to get for the day. And don't let it dictate your life, right? So <clears throat> some people, you know, will pull cards and unless it's an auspicious day for them, they won't ever leave the house or they won't, you know, do certain things or engage in certain things. And these tools are not intended to be that way. They're intended to give you guidance. And yes, sometimes a warning, right. To be, you know, on the lookout for certain things maybe happening or think, you know, just to bring into your awareness, but don't just live your life around what the horoscope says for the day or what the animal card might say for the day, right? Give it some consideration, but they're they're not there to dictate um, how you live and every decision you're supposed to make. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes along with any kind of divination thing. Um you don't want to always use those for making every decision. Right. Right. Tools and helping you make a decision is important in one way, but what's even more important is to learn how to do it without using tools. <laughs> and maybe we'll talk about that on another episode too, but, um, and not just rely, uh, wholly, on something like that that you use whether it's a pendulum you know whether it's cards whether it's a psychic reading that you have from somebody um you know i, I knew one person that was like they had an akashic record psychic that they would refer to for everything and anything in their life and it's like have a little agency make your own fucking decisions right instead of trying to just do everything by the book. Because at the end of the day, every decision that we make is the right decision anyway. We might make a different decision in the future, but every decision that you make is the right decision to make. And everything is going to work out exactly as it's supposed to work out anyway. But these tools help raise your awareness and help you tap into some of that intuition. Right? Because again... You know, when I'm sitting there and I see the hawk fly by, I have to, again, go into myself and say, oh, I think hawk means this. Is that what it means? I get the feeling. Right? Hawk comes back later. Same kind of thought pattern. I think this is what it means, right? In fact, as I'm, as I'm relating it right now, I'm feeling it again. Right? So... Um, you know, as Brad read his swan card this morning, again, I'm sure he was asking himself questions mm -hmm. as he was going through it and feeling into what does that mean for me right now, today, in this mm -hmm. situation, in this context that I'm in. So I guarantee you, if Brad pulls a swan card tomorrow, it's going to have a different meaning for him. probably going to be a different meaning tomorrow than it was today, but can, can we tap into and, and really kind of get the message from the universe of what it, what it means for us at that particular time? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be careful. Cause it's, it's really easy. I think to rely on some of these things and, and to the extent where you don't um, like you said, you're afraid to, to leave your house. You're afraid, you know, many books, movies, or whatever, talking about how somebody gets a sign that says, oh, well, heck, most of the Greek tragedy is, is all about things like 
you know, you're going, you're, you're going to kill your, your uh, son's going to kill you or something. And so the, the, the king goes and kills all the boys or something like that because he's been told that there's a son that's going to kill kill him and, and at the end of the day if the son kills it like i mean all this stuff with with auspices and oracles and all these things like if you allow them to control your life that's not really a life at that point like these are meant to be guidance it's meant to be things that can help you um like you said things that can go help bring something to your awareness like I would not have been thinking about uh, grace and just allowing, you know, when it came to trying to come up with a podcast topic, I'd probably have been like, all right, what well, I got to cover something, uh, what, you know, what, what we haven't talked about before, what, what people need to hear. Like I've been working through it and trying to cognitively come up with something, but the fact that I had the, the swan this morning, that brought to my awareness, the fact of, Hey, grace, this is an instance where I can apply grace where I can allow mm -hmm. something to happen in my life and not get so worked up about it. Um, because as professionals, as kind of type A personality type of stuff, it's really tempting to jump to, you know, overthinking about stuff mm -hmm. um, and, and really starting to worry. And sometimes it's just, eh, you know what? It's going to come. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it's going to be, but whatever needs to happen is going to happen. And like you said, it's going to be in my best good and there's no wrong choices or decisions. You know, at the end of the day, all paths lead to the same place. Yep. And, and for some people, you know, again, like, like we talked about, Brad pulls an animal card every day. Mm -hmm. That's part of what he does. That's part of his art. I don't, right? I've got decks of cards, but I rarely use them, right? But I have other things that I do. And it's okay because I'm different than Brad, right? And so, you know, even everybody listening, some of you are going to resonate with, you know, animal medicine uh, and are going to, you know, dig deep into that. Others of you are going to be like, well, I don't know. It's nice to know that, but it's probably not my cup of tea. Okay, fine. Find out what your cup of tea is, right? <laughs> and, and then just start leaning into and using it because these are, these are all just tools right? Either divination tools or even going to a psychic or an oracle or anything, or reading a horoscope, it's all guidance, right? It's guidance. It's things that are put in your way to help guide you and give you some attention and awareness on certain things and help you grow. But, you, you know, don't let it control your life because that's not the intention of it either. Um, so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't want to discount the other aspect of animals and medicine that you actually talked about a little bit at the beginning is the healing power of animals. Oh yeah, um, definitely. You know, the fact that animals and specific, uh, you know, specifically our pets have healing powers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you think about the purring of a cat, that frequency of the purr is healing medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, if you just sit there and, and, and sit with a cat and if it sits on your lap and purrs, you, you can feel that vibration you'd feel that frequency inside you and it, it is healing powers and the same thing with dogs you know dogs cats birds your goldfish your hamster your rat whatever you might have they have healing powers um and and there are things that they can do to help you um mm -hmm. you know besides just hey it's fun to go play frisbee with them you know there's there's things beyond that well, and it's, you know, like, like we talked about in the last episode, everything we're doing in the 3D, we're not just doing that in the 3D. So when you're petting your cat, when you're feeding your dog, you're throwing the Frisbee with the dog. Yeah, you're doing that, but you're doing something else too. And the more you, you come in tune with that and kind of rely on it, the more you'll heal, the more they heal as well. Because um, yeah, pets are amazing. Uh, in that way. So, <clears throat> yep. yeah. This is why we've got four right now. <laughs> well, you got me beat, but that's Possibly all right. Possibly a couple, three right. more coming. Oh, my. Okay, well, you, I was going to say there was one point in my life when the animals in the house outnumbered the, the people, and I had four kids, so we had like eight animals uh, at one time, so I was... 
that was a zoo, but yeah. Yeah, where we might be getting there, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Well, lots of animal medicine coming to Brad's house, then it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, for those of you who are interested, since we're talking about a lot, and if you want, you know, if there's something about this resonated with you, the medicine cards, we've talked about the animal medicine. Here is the set that I use that we both, I think Jason says he has the same one. Yeah. Um, it's just called Medicine Cards, and it's by Jamie Sams and David Carson. Again, you look on YouTube, you can see a picture of it here. Um, there's a box like this, and then there's a book that has information about the animals and what it means when you pull the different ones. So if that's something you're interested in, you know, check it out if that, if that's something that you feel drawn to, and um, and if not. We'll maybe talk about something the next week that is more for you. Yeah. So. Well, like I said, and, and whether you really dig into it or not, everyone listening, you're having animal medicine in your life, whether you realize it or not. Um, so it's always helpful even just to have a resource to go to or even the internet that when you see an animal or all of a sudden you start seeing things more than you were before, there's probably something for you to, to learn from there. And it doesn't mean you have to pull an animal card every day, but just go do a Google search, mm -hmm. you know, when, when these things are kind of showing up in your life all the time and see what it means for you. Um, Cause it's, it's bringing some kind of medicine um, or some kind of healing or some kind of message to you if you're willing to accept and to listen. So. Yep. Yep. So with that, uh, have a great week, everybody. And we'll see you on the next episode. Catch you guys then.